What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for toys? Do you nerd for comics? Then you must nerd for... Rubicon! All right, time to get some of that classic traveling B-roll footage and... Oh, we're here. This is Tom and Lizzie, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding comic book tables, house Legos, and action figures, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom Lizzie collecting right now. Maybe not, uh, because. <laughs> RubleCon is actually a very local to us convention. It is a yearly toy games, comic book convention. Hot Usually wheels. a lot of uh, fun stuff going on there. It is put on by Daniel Rubel of Rubel Miser Comics. So again, very local, but this should be kind of uh, that note to get out there, check for any local conventions in your area. You never know what you're missing out on. And they are a lot of fun, first yes. of all. You see all of these local people that, hey, they nerd out just like you do about all the same stuff you do. So that's always cool, meeting up with those like-minded nerdlings in your own area. <laughs> and, of course, there's always cool stuff to be found. All right, you guys are all set. Plushies. Actually, I think this year we really went heavy on the comics. Yeah, we scene. did. We did this um, time. You did get some toys. I did. And some plushies. Yes, I always get plushies. But uh, yeah, this year it was really comic heavy. The spacing of everything was pretty good. It's not too cramped or anything. It's pretty easy to get to the tables, look everything over. The people that are selling toys and everything, they're all too happy to, you know, kind of help you move around, help grab stuff for you get a closer look at some of that stuff. And it's really nice because they always have so many old school toys. Stop killing me! If you're talking old school Star Wars stuff, oh, you are in luck here. Masters of the Universe, you had said a moment ago, Hot Wheels. They have Hot, Hot Wheels, Wheels like crazy. crazy. If I'm not mistaken, this actually started out as a Hot Wheels training event. Yeah. But then they started inviting comic book people and toy people, and then it just kind of blew up. And one thing that I actually like is seeing the same vendors. I mean, I do love seeing new vendors, but it's always fun to have that returning vendor because you get to see the new stuff they've found and yes. they've brought. So. And they remember you, and often yeah. they remember if there's anything that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. One of them I had actually spoken to before about her Silverhawks jet, and he even asked you. Yeah, he goes, uh, I haven't found the Silverhawks jet yet. And like before we even really got a hello out there. And I was like, well, actually, Tom found it for me. So he was very pleased with that. Sometimes you find things you didn't even know existed. We have seen the Darkwing Duck toys before. Right. But we have never seen or even knew that the plane existed as a toy. That's true. In fact, we reached out to some of our friends in the community and they didn't know it existed either. <laughs> so that was a, a uh, real cool uh, thing to see. Though, obviously, it's not out there very much because it was a little it pricey. Was pricey. It was out of our range. Yeah. But that would have been too cool to have in the collection. Yeah. Let's get dangerous. When there's trouble... Call DW. <laughs> All Doctor right. Who! No, that's, that's the wrong DW. That's oh, something different. That's something different. Mm, that's something different. <laughs> All right. Well, one thing that we always have fun doing is uh, there's, there's one vendor that always has a little bit of a game of chance going, and we generally don't luck out with these games, but we still try them out anyway. Are you ready? There it is. We got ten. ten. She-Hulk. She-Hulk. Nice. 
So this one, it was just uh, roll the dice. They had comics set out by their number. Whatever number you rolled, that's the comic you won. I didn't quite get the one that I was eyeballing, but we did get some fun issues. All right, so I'll trade all these for the John Carter one. <laughs> Look at there, the sensational She-Hulk, and uh, looks like we've got some knockoff X-Men on the cover here. So yeah, yeah, we'll have to check out what's going on there. What if Elektra had lived? Hey, even if it's not so much characters or storylines that you don't typically follow, the What If series is always fun. I love the What fun. If series. I'm looking forward to the show. Oh yeah. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question, what if? And then H.G. Wells, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Ooh, this is a uh, Marvel movie special, no less. Interesting. And then we got Arrow season 2.5. Now, I never actually got into watching that show. I've been interested in it, but I never did get around to watching it. I did enjoy Arrow from Smallville, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Issues different, like, different actors, by the way. Issues like this are always interesting <laughs> because they will continue certain story threads. So with that 2.5, maybe it's linking up. Yeah, might be in between the seasons. Between seasons two and three. Oh, goodness. What's happening, Spidey? Oh, the lethal foes of Spider-Man. We got a first issue. All right, so I can name Rhino and Vulture. Yeah. <laughs> Doc Ox army thingies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a good thing we have we it so we can read it and find out. got like some bondage going on here. Whoa, though. whoa, you're taking this the wrong way. No, 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 uh, don't. Oh. Hey man, look, look, That's... Peter, I'm not here to judge your life choices, dude. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Haunted Pizza. That doesn't sound good. Haunted that sounds pizza. Awesome. Haunted pizza? Well, not haunted pizza, but the thing sounds fun. It sounds like fun to read. I've probably had some pizza in the past that had some toppings that might have haunted me later. You know, something I've actually always thought would be fun to do, which James Ralph did do, was the pizza challenge. I'd do it. I'd I would totally do it. Stuff. Face it, bud. Peanut butter and clams is an acquired taste. That looks uh, really disgusting. Peanut uh, butter and clams. Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Don't eat it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. Well, let's break up this comic book love just for a second. Uh, do you want to show off a plushie or a toy? I can show off a plushie. I picked up two Pokemon. Oh my gosh, he's I got a cute. teeny tiny little Mewtwo. He's so cute. I love him. And then I think he's called Dragonite? Dragonite, yeah. yeah. The thing that made me want this one is because he just looks so proud of himself. Yeah, he's, he's just like pushing Look out at his me. chest there. Thought I would have some fun with some some pokey plushies. Dragon's gotta be proud. <laughs> Alright, uh what about one of the toys? Let's do one of the toys now. I got a toy that I've actually had my eye on for quite a while now. I probably when you and I first got together, we were down at a little teeny tiny town flea market. And I saw this for $18 and I was, I'm a cheapskate and I was like, I'm not paying 18 <laughs> bucks for that. That's expensive. And then we've seen it for like 37 to $40 and up ever since mm -hmm. then. Got me finally my Barbie and Ken as Star Trek people. This should make the quapple of nerds very, very happy. This is one toy that I do not plan to take out of the box. I know, but the box is so cool. I really like the setup they've got going on yeah. in here. So that's why I kind of want to leave it in there. It does have its original price tag from Walmart for $73. Well, hey, you still got a good deal over the retail yeah. price. Yeah, I only paid 20 bucks for this, which I was very pleased with. Well, I'm glad you finally got that after wanting it for so long. Thank you. Mr. Scott, there was no deity involved. It was my cross-circuiting to me that recovered them. Well then, thank pitchforks and pointed ears.
something that is always nice about going to a convention with comic books is obviously you can start doing those bundle deals. So whenever they have, uh, you know, a little higher priced issues or something, mm -hmm. you know, might knock a few bucks off, get those together. And often it's just fun to, to kind of flip through stuff and see what they have. So you might get like a full story set or you might just pick up some random covers because why not? I want to check this out. For instance, I knew that there was the crossover between Red Sonia and Vampirella meeting Betty and Veronica Good Lord. of RT. <laughs> That's but not an eclectic group right there. This cover, I could not resist this one because it's doing the classic Back to the Future pose. I picked up this very fun cover of The Suicide Squad. Now, I have actually never read any of The Suicide Squad, so I don't know anything about it. I just liked the cover and thought it looked like a lot of fun. So that's basically why I got this one. Well, I couldn't leave this guy sitting right there. It is an issue of Legend of Zelda, one of the Valiant comics. We've got number five right here. Now we do have these already, but these are fun pieces of history. Not a lot of people knew about the, the really old school Zelda comics. Most people may know more about the manga and such. This, uh, this might just have to be trade bait if there's anything <laughs> out there that I that I need. Well, I did pick up number three of the Death Metal with Wonder Woman on it. Definitely want to start getting into these. I've been picking up the Death Metal toys. The whole storyline sounds like a whole heck of a lot of fun. So this was basically my jump into the Death Metal. And I just really liked this cover. And so starting off with number three. But I really like that my Wonder Woman was front and center. And then you've got Death Metal Batman on his bike. And I love that and I have the toy of Batman and Wonder Woman so it goes with him. I got me an original a little bit well-loved gizmo from 1984. His eyes are a little wonky <laughs> just a little they're a little crazy eyes. He's got the crazy But there's eyes. a reason he's crazy. Ready? <laughs> that would do it. Yeah. Poor little guy's been shaking up a few times. <laughs> It is hilarious. Doesn't sound like Gizmo. Not sure why they put this in this toy, but who doesn't want to just sit there and shake him? <laughs> That's why I got him. <laughs> so basically, next time you and I have an argument, I'm just going to look at you and go. I won't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, something that we uh, picked up, this was more in tangent. We both wanted this pretty much as soon as we saw it. I mean, we had the DK barrel right there, and the gentleman who remembered your Silverhawks jet, yes. uh, he pointed this out, didn't he? Did. He did. He goes, he, hey, they match, like, they match. It's like he knew we would be interested in the Donkey Kong Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> it's real cool. As far as Yahtzee games go, and it's you know, a nice small compact one. Looks like everything is in there. Got all these dice. I didn't dice. even look at the dice. Are they different on them? Do they have? Oh, yep, yep. Nice. They have different things on the on each side. How much fun is that? So you got your small pencil. You got your scorecards, and of course your instructions. What better fits the Yahtzee? Uh, feel than yeah. the Donkey Kong barrel, yep. really. And, of course, with this being so compact, I don't know, uh, this could be a great piece to keep in the old DK barrel, so if we're out and about at a convention we're with bored. some friends and, you know, want to play a game, there we go. It's <laughs> not as cute as, as your shaky toy. Look, we're stomped! All right, let's look at some more comics. I've got Dragon's Lair. This is issue number two. We had issue one and three, but they were 
both separate series or something? Yeah. I don't even know. They were. <laughs> it didn't One matter. from series, from a series and three from another series. It didn't even two. matter. It's an issue of yeah. Dragon's Lair. You really don't see these that often and it was, it was too fun to pass up. Who doesn't love Dirk the Daring? A comic I got uh, kind of drew my eye because you know how much I love my Wanda. It, it seems like there was a video about that. Well, I got a Vision comic with quite a few Wandas on oh, the cover. Can a... you count how many Wandas are on this cover? This is uh, Vision's dream right there. I think so. I think so. But uh, y'all will have to tell me how many Wandas you see on the cover of this. <laughs> now this. Check it out. Nightmares on Elm Street. So it looks like it may be issue number four here, not intended for children, but a Freddy Krueger comic. Come on, you think I'm gonna pass this up when I see this? I'm gonna jump ahead and say, not only was I not gonna pass up Freddy, but I wasn't gonna pass up Jason either. Two issues of Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. And Un then we do more movies. Unfortunately, this is issue two and three of three. Of three. So now well, we're missing least, just issue one. That's better though. At least it's not like an 11 part series and we only have two of it. Well, I bought a fun cover crossover, Spider-Man and Batman. And the other cool thing that I liked about this one, aside from the fact that it's Spider-Man and Batman crossing over, is the fact that it's a raised cover, so it's it's kind of kind of interesting there. And I also got the Mighty Thor, but it is a Mary Jane variant cover with Mary Jane as Lady Thor. And she has promptly placed Spider-Man in his place by saying, you stay there. Oh, you don't get to move because I'm putting Mjolnir on top of you. Oh, poor guy. Well, you know, he should be worthy. <laughs> Well, the last, uh, I don't know if you'd really even call it a toy or anything. It was with the toys, but it is a can holder <laughs> <laughs> and it is a uh, little pinup girl. Had to go with the redhead, first of all, but I don't know. It was just kind of cute and whimsical and I felt like it would be a, a good prop piece, you know, for whatever doing B-roll or anything. I don't know if I'll actually put my can of beer or whatever, yoo-hoo in there. <laughs> Now that would be hilarious to see. Because <laughs> you expect a can of like Bud, you know, or Coors or something, but then you just like sit there drinking your yoo hoo <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, I did get a few more plushies. Hey, and they're comic themed. And theme. they're comic themed, so it goes along with it. So I got me a penguin because <laughs> you make fun of me all the time because for some reason, and I don't know why, but I just sometimes will go, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> She Just does. Out she of does, the blue. guys. <laughs> Is this because I make the noise all the time? <laughs> so I got a com or a plushie to go along with it. And then I got a plushie of Telesplash Gaming. Yeah, I can see the resemblance now. <laughs> it's Telesplash. It's Telesplash Gaming. <laughs> I've got to catch up on some polos, my friends, but today... I'll do a little tap dance for you. <laughs> the, the good old Joker, he's got some nice soft hair going on up here. But basically, uh, yeah, this, this is Chris from Telesplash. <laughs> yeah, let's go kill Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Joker doesn't do that. <laughs> Give me the right to stuff to handle that 
<laughs> oh, penguin! You never cease to get a chuckle out of me! <laughs> Give me my toys. <laughs> That's my cue! Okay, so for the last bit of comic pickup I got, well, there's, uh, oh, actually, I got this one for somebody, so, sorry guys, can't show you that one, that'd ruin the surprise. Don't ruin the surprise! But I did get a Tomb Raider comic from Top Cow, I don't even know if Top Cow's still around, <laughs> but these old school Lara Croft Tomb Raider comics, they were always cool. They had a style that was very on par with uh, Witchblade. They did some crossovers and Fathom, stuff like that. I enjoyed that we actually were able to find a lot of video game slash movie comics this time around. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Sometimes you don't find those. They're hard to find. I'm always keeping an eye out for those. And something really cool at conventions like this, and sometimes in comic shops, if you look around, they will have old issues of Heavy Metal magazine. So Heavy Metal... A lot of cool storylines with the artwork. A lot of people are more familiar with the animated film. But this one, I don't know, the uh, the fun pinup buddy girl on the front, it's, it's almost like a crossover, like Playboy meets Heavy Metal or something. Just keep in mind that uh, Heavy Metal, like the animated film, not so much for kids, so heads up. Well, the last set of comics I got is in, in just that. It's a set of comics. I uh, decided to pick up The Vision, uh, The Visions, and I got issue number two, three, four, five, nine, and eleven. Now, I haven't quite looked into how many are in this series, so I don't know how many... I need to go. Obviously, I've got some fill-ins there, too. I've already, a long time ago, long before WandaVision came out, I had already picked up WandaVision comics, Wanda and Vision. There was a 12-part series and I think an 8-part series, so I've managed to get both of those very inexpensive. I figured I will try to start going for the Visions now <laughs> before it blows up too much. That's uh, probably a good and, idea. Yeah. So the only thing is, I mean, I basically just got this because it's Vision. It goes along with my Wanda, because I know Wanda's not really in these. It's him having his own little robotic family. Just The kids are kind of creepy looking, though, I think. <laughs> so, I mean, look at that. They're kind of weird. <laughs> All right, and you have just a couple more toys. I do. Last toys. Last two toys that I picked up. I picked up these Mighty Max Polly Pocket style. This one is actually a Mighty Max, and I liked it. It, only, it has a little, like death in there i guess that would be the grim I, reaper i feel like that was the main villain from mighty max yeah. but i never watched the cartoons so i'm not familiar enough to know his name or anything yeah me neither but i just actually really liked the way this whole thing looked on the inside like a you know a villain cave or whatnot the more you look at it the more you see like you know there's skeletons hanging there or there's jewels or just all kinds of things all over the place and then i liked just at the top a little library and you can even make him sit in the library, which I thought is fun. One thing I would like to do, which I haven't had a chance to yet, is look up this set and see exactly what came with it. Because it does seem like there's some missing things. Which, I mean, when they're that small, yeah. that's it, almost it, expected. It makes sense, but it's just, I was just, you know, curious as to what was supposed to come with this one. I believe that Mary at Coopal of Nerds actually collects Polly Pockets, so maybe she would know like the best places to look yep. to find missing miniatures. I will say I never had any Mighty Maxes growing up as a kid because I was a girl. People got me Polly Pockets. No offense to Polly Pockets, but Mighty Maxes were a little cooler, <laughs> and I kind of wish I had gotten the Mighty Max. So, and then the other one that I got is a turtle, but it is the turtles. There is obviously a lot going on with this one and this one does come with shredder and leonardo and there's like all kinds of things that this thing does like i don't know first and foremost you can open up his spine when it's closed and there's a bomb inside of it and it becomes a tunnel tube thingy when he's open 
which is kind of cool. I think some of these would actually connect together, but I'm not 100% sure be, about that's that. That's neat. It's got a lot of fun moving pieces. There's kind of a periscope up here, a little bit of movement to his head when you mess with that. But then it's got this ledge that comes out. That's kind of cool, you know, opens up the play area a little more. It looks like most of the stickers are still in place. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out that right here. It looks like maybe something is missing there. So we may have to look into that yeah. and see what's missing. You've got a little hatch that kind of leads down to the ground, like a, almost a ramp. And then the centerpiece, it does spin and I'm kind of guessing that this has got to be like a tortured table because maybe the arm is supposed to reach over and torture the turtles because you've got Shredder. Yep. So obviously he's doing something, shaking them up, spinning them up to prepare his turtle soup. One of the last things we picked up was a poster of Zombie Dave. I like this. Lost scene number one. Dave's Jedi equivalency training. <laughs> but this is a very cool looking poster. And the final issue of Zombie, Dave. of Zombie Dave is out now. We got to talk to the creator of Zombie Dave. He actually had a funny story kind of telling the convention woes from the other side of the table. <laughs> As a as an artist, a lot of times I will I sell my comics, and then I draw, and I really enjoy cons like these because I get a chance to sit down and draw and uh, do original art. And so I spent all week like putting just the right brushes and pencils and everything together. And I got here and I had all my right brushes and pencils and papers and all that. But you know what I forgot? My books. <laughs> So, so, and I had specifically promoted this as the new zombie day. So I had to drive an hour all the way home and an hour all the way back. So I am late today, but I am still having a good con because now I'm here and I'm getting to visit with you guys. And you're like my favorite, favorite show on YouTube. So, and Miss Lacey has goodies. <laughs> I got plushies. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little bit of a pain to yeah. get all that way just to mm, have to turn around. And I felt bad for him because it's like, you know, this is the one time that his wife was out doing something also, so she couldn't just help out and get in the car and drive it up to you. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, wow. it happens. And hey, we were glad that he made it there and that we got to see him and we got to pick up a new poster now that we've got all the issues. So we are, we are ready to go. There's Zombie Dave fandom. You know, they always have at RubleCon mystery bags, and guess what? I didn't get one this she year. She didn't. Well, they ran I was, out. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. Yeah, you didn't grab any right when we came in the door, which no. I think normally you do, so maybe in the future, if yeah. we want one, it might be a good idea to grab one then. I kind of wanted to look around first, and but that's okay. There's always next year. <laughs> Plushies. Now, in the past, they have had concessions inside at RubleCon. This year, they actually had a taco truck pull up. We did not partake in any tacos. But it smelled really good. But you did have a food option there. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, everything was set up really nice. It was mm -hmm. good to see some of those vendors we were getting more and more familiar with. Definitely fun. Picking up some new comics, some new toys. All right. Well, hey, nerdlings, <laughs> please let us know in the comments down below what you thought of any of our pickups and share with us any experiences you have, maybe some local conventions of your own, and definitely check out your local area. Make sure you're not missing out on any of those because it's really great to meet up with these vendors and to find stuff like this in your area, to not mm -hmm. have to travel so far. Yep. And you can always make really great deals there. You can make great friends there. Drop a like for rating tombs with certificates of authenticity. I didn't even see that before. How about that? Nice. <laughs> and ring the bell if you like Mighty Max. What about Gizmo? Shake up Gizmo <laughs> for those notifications. <laughs> and don't forget. To like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh, and if we like it... We nerd it. But one thing we do not do is feed our... 
Scrubdowns after midnight. Now, what midnight though? Which timeline are we talking about here? Are we talking Eastern, Western, British? I'd like to see a British Gremlins movie. They're too. They'd be too polite. They'd be like, "Oh no! Oh heavens no! Let's let's not eat that! No 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 no!" And the Gremlins are like, mm, "You're right. I won't eat that. Ho ho ho! Pip pip cheerio!" <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. <laughs> Get those uh those interlocking well what am I trying to think of? Connections. Yes, thank you. <laughs> interlocking. Wow. Interlocking conversations. Okay. Like we have seen duck the the almost called ducktails, okay. Duck, dark wing duck. Ready? Yes. Ooh, air airy, airy, airy. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Mama said a what? <laughs> Mama said a what? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. I said yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people may know. Jeez, Tom. Take a drink. <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah,